Well, I've got a rather intriguing report to share with you guys today. The Democrats have just made an epic U-turn on Miss Kamala Harris. In fact, the New York Times, The Hill, and even the Wall Street Journal have just around the same time, shall I say, near simultaneously printed articles bashing Mrs. Kamala Harris. You guys are going to be floored. Now, just a quick disclaimer, uh, before I show you these news articles, I want to say this. I don't believe that The Hill, The Wall Street Journal, and The New York Times are suddenly coming to the right side. Absolutely not. I think they're forced to print this stuff because Democrats themselves are are starting to have some serious questions about Kamala Harris and about the economy and about what the heck is going on. So they are very simply covering their their butts, okay, to dumb that word down just a little bit. But uh, you guys are going to love this. Take a look at this first one here, and I want to show you, uh, give credit to where I found it. I found it on dailymail.co.uk regarding the New York Times when the New York Times turns on Kamala as the liberal newspaper runs a string of brutal opt-ed slamming Harris as weak, a phony, and ignorant. Is her brat summer finally over. Now here's the actual article or one of the articles referenced there. And this was published by radical leftist news organization, the New York Times. And it's an opinion piece and it says, joy is not a strategy. Now before I get into this, I want to just remind you guys that during the DNC, and all through the mainstream media, they were saying, oh, Kamala Harris is such a joy, joy, joy. Like uh, you can literally play like 20 news stations all using joy to describe Kamala Harris. Well, somebody at the uh, New York Times got a little frustrated by this, you know, because they're all given the talking points. Joy was one of those talking points. But here it is. Joy is not a strategy. Uh, and this was written you could see by Patrick Healy. But here's what he goes on to state, and I quote, if the Democrats' convention's message for America had to fit on a bumper sticker, it would read, Harris is joy. The word has gone from being a nice descriptor of Democrat energy to being a rhetorical two by four thumped on voters' heads. Don't get me wrong, there are many worse things than joy, but I cringed a little at the convention hall Tuesday night when Bill Clinton said Kamala Harris would be the president of joy. Joy is the new fetch from Mean Girls, and Democrats are bent on making the word happen. But joy is not a political strategy, and God is not a political strategy. <laughs> hey, I actually like a, a part of an article, you know, that New York Times posted. So yeah, joy is not a political strategy. You're damn right right? Not only that, but they also printed this piece. And you have to see this one here. This is also by the New York Times. Trump can win on character. Wow. This may be the nicest thing they've ever said about Donald Trump in their entire life. And this one's by a different guy, by Rick Lawry, okay? He's the editor-in-chief there of the National Review. But here's what he goes on to state in this article. You guys are going to love this. It says, to wit, Miss Harris was too weak to win the Democrat primary contest that year. She was too weak to keep from telling the left practically everything it wanted to hear when she ran in 2019. She is too weak to hold open town hall events or to do extensive or at the moment any sit down media interviews. She has jettisoned myriad positions since 2019 and 2020 without explanation because she is a shape-shifting opportunist, a chameleon, who can and will change on almost anything when politically convenient. Even if what she's saying is moderate or popular, she can't be trusted to hold to it once she is in office. Amen and amen. She's a freaking chameleon. It goes on. She didn't do more as vice president to secure the border 
or to address inflation because she didn't care enough about the consequences for ordinary people. She doesn't care if her tax policies will destroy jobs. She has been part of an administration that has seen real wages stagnant while minimizing the problem because the party line matters to her more than economic reality for working Americans. You get the point. There is plenty for the Trump campaign to work with along these lines. <laughs> oh my goodness. I told you, this definitely is bringing a smile to my face. Because it's true. She screwed up and epically destroyed our economy. She's out there lying. One minute, uh, she's the border czar, and suddenly she's not the border czar, even though we all know that you are. And suddenly, you want an open border, and now you want to close the border on our showing ads with Donald Trump's border wall. You want to tax tips, and then you don't want to tax tips, not to mention you were the deciding vote on the inflation problems we have now were all caused because of this little thing you signed into law, Mrs. Harris. And all of the people are starting to see this. Even Democrats are seeing this. They're asking the question, saying, what the hell is going on here? Kamala Harris is flip-floppy on everything. And this is why the New York Times finally had to write about it, because she is. They are doing damage control right now. The New York Times is not on our side. None of these news networks I'm going to show you uh, Wall Street Journal and The Hill. And they're, they're not on our side. They never will be. They are covering their rear ends. Now, obviously, the New York Times was not the only one. Also, Wall Street Journal. Take a look at this. And again, I'm glad that at least some Democrats are getting this information. Uh, Wall Street Journal, another opinion piece here. Are you willing to pay $5 trillion for Kamala vibes? The vice president's plan for a slowing economy is massive tax increases. You want to win some Democrats to our side? Tell them what Kamala Harris intends to do with their taxes. And yes, that is going to include the middle class, regardless of what they say, because it always falls to us, right? But it goes on. And here's what they say in the Wall Street Journal. The economy has lately been growing about half as fast as when VP Harris took office in January of 2021. While the annual inflation rate is about twice as high, she deserves more than her share of the blame Thank you for providing the crucial tie-breaking Senate vote for the spending schemes that fueled inflation and malinvestment. And now she's promising to impose destructive new tax hikes on our slow growth economy. In fact, the economy is growing so slow that the Federal Reserve officials are worried that pretty soon it won't be growing at all. And you know, here's what's funny and not funny about the Wall Street Journal, but they were all for the little spending scheme that they're now against. They were all in on it, the Wall Street Journal. They were all for it. And now they're suddenly like, oh my gosh, it caused inflation, which is exactly what we said it would do and exactly what it did, right? They may have questioned it a little, but yeah, it's a scheme that screwed over everyone. And that's why we have inflation. It's not because of the greedy little people selling groceries, right? Goes on to state this, as job creation now slows so much that it's motivating the Fed to abandon its fight against inflation, who thinks massive tax hikes are the right answer for fiscal policy, question mark. Even the New York Times recognizes that Harris's administration would not come cheap to American tax papers. The newspaper's Andrew Duran writes, in a campaign otherwise light on policy specifics, VP Harris this week quietly rolled out her most detailed far-ranging proposal yet, nearly a $5 trillion tax increase over the next decade. That would kill our economy, by the way. And among the most destructive plan is to surge the federal corporate income tax rate to 28% from 21%, which Donald Trump moved that down to 21%. And they actually give him credit here on this article. The Harris plan to destroy this policy shows just how fiercely, ideologically, she is committed to ignoring the experiences of recent years. We're not just talking about failure to acknowledge her own mistakes, but also refusal to credit a successful Trump policy, even in the face of evidence that it worked exactly as 
intended. Wow, they actually said something nice about Donald Trump and his policy for once. We are screwed if she goes back to that 28%. We really and honestly and truly are. Now, The Hill took a little bit of a different approach, and I'm going to show you this. Uh, opinion piece, Kamala's moment, the pantsuit is truly empty. I like that title. Uh, opinion by Derek Hunter, right? But here's what he goes on to state. Harris still does not seem ready to be the Democrat Party's nominee, let alone the president. She is an empty pantsuit basking in the glow of positive media coverage and und burdened by accountability. I love how he uses her own word against her. But she has no accountability because the mainstream media is out there putting her up. But there's nothing to place her on. She doesn't even really have a strategy. It goes on. Harris has now officially accepted the Democrat Party's nomination. Her nomination was historic, as liberals like to say, but not because of her ethnicity. Rather, she is the first nominee of either party who did not have to secure a single delegate or a single vote in the primaries. She is historic in that it is highly unlikely <laughs> that she could have secured that nomination had there been any sort of competition for the job. Well said. Well said. Again, they haven't turned a new leaf. They're just having to face the facts of their own party. In fact, there's also this I kind of want to throw out there, and I won't get into the details, uh, but here it is. And this is on the Gateway Pundit. Whoa, far left presidential candidate Cornell West says Kamala bribed him to drop out, offered him a job and to pay off some of his debt, which he conveniently denied. Right? But she is desperate, folks. She is absolutely desperate. I'm getting more hope as we go more and more into this election season. There's a lot of things that we're going to have to combat, right? But, you know, Kamala Harris, her true nature is really starting to surface. And that's why she hasn't really done any interviews or, or public things because she knows she's, she's only debating herself. She's debating her own policies for the last three and a half years, and it's really slapping her in the face because people are starting to ask those questions. In fact, um, she she actually did just agree to do an interview on Thursday with CNN's Dana Bash, a radical leftist herself. But we shall see how that shall pan out. But that's the first one she's ever uh, said she would do. Anyhow, um, I think I need to send my emotional support pickle to Miss Harris. <laughs> My friend got this for my birthday this week, and you guys got to see it. So let me show you what it says. There it goes. Emotional support pickle. You can kind of see. And it says, I will always be around to let you know that you are a big deal. <laughs> I like pickles. I do like pickles. But anyway, I, maybe I should send it to Kamala Harris for her first interview. I'm sure she's a pretty nervous lady. Anyhow, I love all of you. Um, as a quick reminder, get to RestrictedRepublic.com. Uh, I really hope to see you guys there. This is one of the ways um, that we can combat everything that's going on, all the censorship that's happening. As you know, uh, the um, CEO, the, the the guy there uh, of Telegram, pa Pavel, has been arrested. And who knows what they could do with his platform at this point. So please join us at Restrictive Republic. That is why we went behind the paywall. You can get it for $5 per month. Use the coupon code LISA and the number five. I really and truly hope to see you there because we do exclusive content. Justice Knight has just put up a big video regarding the MPOX. You're going to want to see it, uh, but it's exclusive to Restricted Republic. Anyhow, I love you all. Thanks again for tuning in. I'm Lisa Haven signing out.